Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are in the world, it's Michael Johnson TV coming to you live on twitch.tv slash Michael Johnson TV. And yes, we are live. It's 10.15 a.m. Eastern time. Let me delete this because now we're live. We don't need this anymore on the Microsoft whiteboard. Does this work? Yes, it works. So welcome, folks. Been playing some more with the LiDAR scanner on my new, for me, refurbished, pre-loved iPhone 12 Pro, which has three cameras, you know, the uh, medium, the wide, regular, and telephoto, and also has this fourth little sensor on there, which is the LiDAR sensor, which has a reduced resolution image, black and white, according to the depth, and I was out yesterday, again, having fun with this thing, and I discovered a new app uh, called Stray Scanner, and it's quite magical, I, I find. I don't know how I found this on Twitter, developer Kenneth Blomquist, and here's an example of the depth map that you can record. This is really you'll remember we're getting back to the rawest data that we can extract from the iPhone using the iPhone really just as a sensor, uh, as a just sort of a distributed sensor app that you carry with you and that records data. So uh, you remember I was working with Polycam showing all these meshes that Polycam reconstructs but Polycam is using data from the phone, of course. It's using image data. It's using depth information from the LiDAR sensor, uh, in essence, what they call RGBD. So red, green, blue, regular RGB video, and D for depth. So depth, uh, yeah, it allows you to record color depth and IMU. IMU, I forgot what it stands for, but it's like implicitly calculating the position and orientation of the phone in space based on all the sensors, accelerometers, gyroscopes, uh, maybe compass, um, and there's another one that I forgot. <laughs> and it outputs uh, data, basically. But what was really fun for me was just you can have the screen here. This is the screenshot of the app. Here it's showing the depth map information, and it's looking at like a scene with a with a coffee cup here. But if you touch the screen, it'll show you instead the RGB, the, the video, like what you would normally um, expect to see. So I've been having fun with this, and yeah, like I said, I was using it as just a new way of seeing the world. Really, it's a it's a black and white camera, low resolution, right? Your normal video would be 1920 by 1440, let's say pixels. Um, so we're gonna just sketch on here because, well, why not? So typically, right? This is the RGB uh, video, RGB video, and I think it's roughly 1920 by 14, no, four, ah, <laughs> 1440 and 1920 here, right, which is about a four thirds, I believe. And here on the, on the depth map, this is the depth map, depth. It's a black and white 16 bit uh, PNG uh, file and it's 192 by 256 so you can see it's much more blocky and much lower resolution right than than the RGB um, video and it's nominally using yeah using the lidar signal which basically it's the small little black um, circle on the front of your phone and what it has is a bunch of infrared, I believe. I was looking up the details, but sorry, I don't have them right now, but looking up the details of this LiDAR sensor, which was fascinating. It's like a v, VCSE or something like that, vertical cavity 
uh, system. Uh, ah, I'll have to look up the articles on uh, Forbes or other places. But this is for now. Let's just uh, for, whoops. Let's forget about this. How do we do change the color and stuff? Ah, oh, here's the eraser. Yeah, I'm just gonna erase this. So it's just magical looking through the viewfinder and seeing this view of the world. And it reminded me of my uh, recent adventures in uh, photography when I was uh, streaming a couple of weeks ago and we went out and, and, and set our cameras to actually display black and white when after we took the picture so that you could really work in detail in black and white. And this was like a new way to look at the world in black and white. And uh, I'm gonna go now into um, a bit more detail on on this and, and how, I, how I worked with it. So we start with, uh, this is the data that uh, gets output from this app. So these are extra files that I've created um, based on some of the information. So it gives you an RGB video Okay, so we can just open that up in our regular VLC player, and there we are. We're waving around the camera, and sorry, I'm going to get a bit dizzy. It's going to flip, and then it's upside down. <laughs> i got to figure out what the orientation is, but yeah, this is just a regular video recording of what you see with the regular uh, camera. Then it also gives you two directories with the confidence map and the depth map. So the depth map is really uh, PNG files. And we can, I don't know, what's it gonna open it in, in photos? Yeah, that's okay. So we open up one of these files, looks something like this. So again, quite blocky, 192 by 256 and black and white. And nominally the data here corresponds to distance in millimeters actually. So there's data really embedded in this. You can view it as an image. It's a PNG image, but it's a 16-bit data file, uh, essentially with depth information at, at each pixel. So what I did is then created a video from these files. And I myself, <laughs> uh, I'm kind of like, I code a little bit, but I'm more into, like, I'm more comfortable now with like Photoshop so, for example, I want to assemble all of these uh, files, PNG files, into a video. And I was able to do it with FFmpeg, but uh, this time around I used uh, Photoshop because FFmpeg wasn't really able to output a good, I don't know, codec or whatever. So that's the depth file. You can then convert that into a, into a video. And this is the confidence uh, map, which is another uh, map, but it looks completely black because there's only three data points. It's either zero, one, or two, uh, which gives you the, the, the level of confidence in the depth uh, measurement. And I'll show you that uh, here in Photoshop. I've imported one of these uh, files. And what I've done is uh, into a video, in fact, and what I've done is actually stretch the histogram in a major way. You see, like if I just had a regular histogram, all the data is at the left of the histogram because it's only three data points, uh, levels of data, zero, one, or two. So I really stretch the histogram levels. So you see that that's the zero, this is one, and this is two now essentially mapped it to black, gray, and white. And so that's the uh, confidence map that is also generated. So then when you post-process that, you can, you can use that in other information. And then there's some information on the camera and then there's this odometry file. So a CSV file, and I've opened it up here in Excel. Uh, again, it's like, if I was a real nerd, I'd be just, you know, showing the showing the, the array in Python and plotting it and doing all kinds of stuff, but I'm not quite there to be able to do that on a live stream uh, quite yet. So there's a timestamp, there's a frame number, there's position and quaternions. This is something that I newly discovered. Quaternion uh, data from the iPhone is a sort of a fusion of many different sensor data. So you have so many sensors on your uh, phone and you have things like uh, the, the image, the, 
the cameras, three cameras, a LiDAR, then it also has acceleration, gravity, gyroscopes, a compass, pressure, GPS, the touch, proximity, microphone level, battery level, all of this data. So this Quaternion is an integration of various data points. I think it's basically acceleration and gyroscope uh, together maybe others together into a best estimate of the orientation in space of your phone. So you can use this data also to rebuild the uh, mesh as I was showing uh, yesterday in the uh, Polycam app. So we're going to show you now what I'm up to in directly in Touch Designer. And again, I'm a quite a beginner in touch designer, but I'm at least able to do a few things. So here I am playing a few videos and this is interesting. For example, this is, I went on a walk down the street. Here's, here's what I'm doing. This is the video. I'm walking down the street here and just framing again. I was looking through the viewfinder. I was seeing this in the viewfinder as I walked around this area. And it was just magical, a new way of seeing the world, very blocky, reduced resolution, black and white, nominally based on depth information, but really the sensor gets quite confused when you're outside. So you can see there is data here, but none of the, like this stuff, these trees here, these trees here are way more than five meters away from the sensor. And really the range of the sensor is only five meters. And I found some technical experiments, people doing, uh, you know, backing up from a wall and measuring the LIDAR signal. And then at five meters, the uncertainty gets so big. So, but it's taking whatever information and it's, and it's making that depth map according to this, which is cool. It's like, here's a, here's a map already. Here's a mask that you could use to cut out the sky, uh, essentially. So you can see on the confidence level here, there's only confidence, really, there's medium confidence in just these little branches uh, here and maybe a few little branches at the top. The rest of this image, it has zero confidence in the depth information, which is cool. Like, okay, <laughs> don't use this to like reconstruct the mesh, but still like, it's just fun. I like just looking at the difference between this image and this and this image, this blocky black and white representation. And I just, I'd love to explore more around compositing these two things together or using this as a low res kind of mask on top of this or upscaling, up adding detail to this image using some AI tools or other stuff like that. So here we go. Here we're getting more, you know, I'm pointed down more at the, the ground level. And there's a lot more information in this depth image. I think I need to stretch out some of somehow the levels and stuff right now. It's just a straight um, scaling. But if we play with the kind of the gamma level and stuff like this uh, here, I'm just doing levels only. So um, but I think there's more, more detail here to, to bring out, but you can see this is the confidence level. So it has high confidence in the range information of these uh, leaves that are close and sort of medium to high confidence in, in this area uh, here. So that's another bit of information that could be used in an interesting way. So here even like it's sensing the presence of these wires and kind of getting confused a little bit by the wires because they're far away and they're small. So there's probably, and there's a combination of like also other signal coming from the sky. Like the LIDAR doesn't work well, like measuring the sky. Like this, this is not going to happen because the LIDAR is using light that should be bouncing off of another surface. And it measures the sort of time of flight um, to, to, that, to that surface. So in this case, we're looking at the sky, there's nothing coming back to the sensor from the sky. So it's getting essentially kind of confused. Uh, if you understand, if you know what I mean, uh, it doesn't know what to do with sky, but it's still getting IR 
probably signals back, but uh, getting totally confused. And but giving this beautiful result, like I just love this. It looks like a little bit lighter here and kind of stormy, dark and stormy kind of clouds. And 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 again, as we go down further to ground level, then it's got more of a of a signal that it can have confidence in. But I find it just kind of wonderfully magical to mix together these video signals. Here's another one that I found nice. All the different layers it's blocking out in, in different regions. So kind of using this map here to cut out regions here, or there's probably, I mean, something you could do in this image anyway to generate this. Because again, the stuff that's far away, low confidence here, zero confidence in this area because it's, it's, it's totally uh, black. The next part I wanted to uh, share today was, there's another part where I was here. I had a, I had a question, a curiosity really, if this LiDAR could be used to like detect objects and calculate speed, calculate velocity of things like pedestrians, like people on bicycles, scooters, and cars and trucks uh right so what i did is just stood at a near an intersection here in the neighborhood and well this is not an urban rant but there is a bit of an urban rant for the quality of the cycling infrastructure here right if your cars are regularly running over the paint markings for your cycle path like it's time to reconsider your cycle path but hashtag urban rant hashtag this is not the place for urban rants i was curious if i could for example mount this iphone on a tripod and just at near an intersection and just kind of monitor traffic uh, essentially so uh, you can see i'm capturing things that are passing through in in the video like the cyclist these cars and these are a few screenshots of that and I didn't do the depth processing for this one unfortunately yet but I could um, do that now so why don't I just make a new file I'm gonna just oh boy I, I thought I'd I thought I'd learned my lesson by not going into Photoshop live on a stream but that's okay let's open it up traffic corner confidence map take the PNG See, I have, a, I have about how many? 1,867 PNG files to bring into an image sequence. So in Photoshop, if you click here, image sequence, and, and just open the first file and click image sequence, it's going to open it into a timeline. And this little pop-up comes up, and I know my data is at 60 frames per second. So we say OK. And this is now the confidence map. But if you remember, the histogram is way buried over at the right. So I'm going to go and add a, I think I need to make this into a smart object. No, I can just add a filter, right? What I want to do is add a brightness and contrast. No, not a brightness and contrast. A da, da, delete, delete, delete. Oh no, just control Z. Yeah, okay. A, whoops, sorry, levels. Levels and again, bring this all the way down and just put it in manually here, two. Those are my levels. It's either zero, one, or two. So that's my confidence map of the oh, there's an object that comes through we'll see that a bit later this is it's flipped so uh, <laughs> let me just render out the video this will be quick i promise it'll be quick let's call this confidence we did it with photoshop it's version 01 and we're not in the same folder annoying traffic corner and select that and See, here's the resolution again, 256 by 192, all frames. I'm going to render that. Rendering the confidence video map. Now, while we're here, we're going to go back to Touch Designer. And this is another thing that I'm not so great in. Is I'd like to have a, a folder dat upstream here so I can just say I have groups of three images that I want to be sort of in, investigating together, all from the same folder. 
but uh, I'm not able to quite uh, do that yet in Touch Designer. So let's make that the traffic. Make this the traffic and the depth. Photoshop version and make this the confidence map from the traffic corner Photoshop version. Now let's queue everything back at the beginning. Pulse it. We need to make sure our videos are aligned. I know in Touch Designer, I'm sure there's another way to do that. So here we go. Here are three, mo three movie files in the RGB, the depth map, and the confidence map. And we're going to transform those by rotating, rotating them 180 degrees and start playing. So, boom, right away you can see the image here. And you can see in the depth map, it's presumably some information coming in here as this cyclist passes through the image and this other cyclist. But you can see in the confidence, there's zero confidence in that depth information. The only confidence really is, uh, and I could show you that by making a composite window. Let's let's go for it. Let's go live on Touch Designer. Here we go. This is the area, right? There's what I've done here is a composite between the RGB and the confidence map, compositing that into here using multiply. So. Um, does it matter? No, it doesn't matter which one's on top in the case of multiply because multiplying is commutative. So this image multiplied by this image gives this image. Everywhere it's black, you see nothing. And everywhere that it's white in the middle, you see the area where it has confidence in the data. So that's why there's no confidence in, in those little data points out there. Let me bring this in here. So that car just went by. We had no confidence in the depth information on that car. There's some confidence. Okay, here's a depth map, but that car is like really close. So it's, uh, I think we could measure the velocity of this vehicle though here. So hashtag measure the velocity of this vehicle going through the frame. Because we do have information. We have confidence in the depth information here. Uh, well, maybe less because of the surfaces and stuff, but resume, there goes the car. So again, there's like a lot of information buried in here coming out of uh, the LIDAR. So we're back to the beginning again. Like, I think what you could do is actually first scan the whole intersection to make a 3D model of the intersection. And then you could just use image data and where things line up in that space. You could just infer from, you know, you use this depth map as a kind of a object detection almost. You don't use the depth information because again, there's no confidence in the depth information of the cyclist, they're too far away. But if I already had a baseline 3D representation of this intersection, that I had physically scanned, for example, using a selfie stick and sweeping from up high, sweeping back and forth and generating the whole 3D space. Then we could use the, the location of the shadows, you know, relative to objects that we, that we know. I'm sure that could work. So hashtag another continuation here of Re scan first the whole intersection, then take static images and record your position, right? If I'm static in this 3D space, I just need to know my camera position in that 3D space, and then I should be able to reconstruct velocities from elements that are coming through. We need to, boom, you need to like capture this, recognize it. This is all the object or in image uh, processing algorithms that are out there in the world that lots of people are uh, are working on image detection object detection in the image a cyclist and then in calculating the velocity of that but what i guess i'm concluding here is that yeah the lidar sensor itself right this car on the other side of the street is out of outside of the the, the confidence area of the uh lidar but the car that's going to come soon 
there. This car, yes, we can calculate the velocity there. So we might try that another time. So yeah, back to the whiteboard. Those are a few of the little images there. And so again, what I found interesting at first, which I didn't quite understand, is like, hey, wait a second. This is the depth map, so-called depth map, the LIDAR information. And it's like, it's measuring this building here. This building's way more than five meters away. Yeah, that's because it's not measuring the building. It's only measuring maybe the real distance like here, right? I need to get the confidence uh, map information at this point in time, and it's probably zero everywhere. So yes, the LIDAR sensor is getting information from the sky and from objects that are far away. It's not exclusively only measuring back the reflection of the uh, transmitter signal, the LIDAR transmission, that, and then inferring distance. It's also collecting information from outside. That's why like LIDAR outside is a particular challenge, I think. And the LIDAR scanner in order to make 3D mesh reconstructions is typically better inside. Uh, and you can even do it in the dark. Actually, it doesn't need light to, you know, you wouldn't have a video, but you would have a depth map uh, if you if you did that in in the dark. So, yeah, this was, again, just magical images, a new way of seeing the world. And I love just like low resolution, blocky that can then be used as inputs or as sort of zones to to analyze, to compute, to, to average, to, to play with really. Um, the top image. So this is what you could do in Touch Designer. And I, and I give an example here. This is the composite multiplying this with this, with the confidence map. But if I just add another composite here, and let's just have some fun, whoopsie, fun with compositing of that with that. Right, you can, this is again, multiply. So the level, multiplying the one that's leveled. So disconnect this, let's just get the raw, the raw signal. Yeah, it's not like you can, lots you can do with compositing. Anyway, I won't go into, I'm not, I'm not so good in touch designer right now to uh, sort of free flow play with that, but I want to sort of posterize this, reduce the, the number of, of grayscale levels, use that to block out some of the regions, maybe process and average out some of the regions here uh, using that uh, information. But this was cool. This was cool. So the whole pipeline, let me just refresh on what the whole pipeline is here. So we start with Stray Scanner, which I love the name. There's just something cool stray scanner like this bird is just soaring over the space and, and sort of scanning for you like a like a personal drone imagine having your own sort of bird that would go out and collect beautiful data so that's my impression of this stray scanner app and there's a guy this guy's a kiki.dev kenneth blomquist is a blog from 2021 march collecting rgb d data sets on LiDAR enabled iOS devices. So that's red, green, blue video along with depth. So again, the app, go back to the data set, gives you confidence, PNGs, depth, PNGs, camera information, the IMU, which is uh, something about the implicated uh, position measurements of the phone. Actually, we can just open that, why not? IMU, it's got AX, alpha, X, Y, Z. Again, two more sort of, you know, vector vector data sets at each timestamp. You can use that for some other processing. And then this is the odometry file. So X, Y, Z position relative to the first frame, I believe, and quaternions for the orientation uh, of the phone. And then the, the RGB. So those are the outputs from the Stray Scanner app. And remember what I did, because <laughs> I'm not so capable in Python and all that stuff. But uh, what I did was import the PNGs into uh, Photoshop. 
And this was an example of the, of the confidence map. And I could do the same thing with the depth map. So let me just try this here, stray scanner. Let's try the traffic corner. I already have a depth. Oh, I did a depth video with, uh, with PowerPoint already. But uh, I'll do another one here. Let's try this one, depth, confidence. Yeah, so we take depth. Click the first video, click image sequence, open. This is going to pop up. I know that the data is recorded at 60 frames per second, so I say OK. It's going to load this into a video layer. That's what Photoshop does when you open a PNG sequence like that. Here's my video layer. And again, it looks quite dark. I'd like this to be white, like this is farthest away. So we can play with the histogram. Again, it's showing the histogram here. So I need to add a, we'll just do levels here. And it's 16 bit data. And I want to just, uh, boom, bring it in there. And let's just check. That looks pretty good. We should try for a frame with a lot of white. There's a lot of white. So yeah, just bring that in about there. And then render. Let's render the video. So it's depth in Photoshop levels. Call it 92. Again, I try to include too much metadata in the naming of the files, which uh, leads me astray. Sometimes this was cinematic exploration. Select the folder. All these presets seem to be fine. So let's render that. Exporting video. So that was what I did. And I did the same thing for the confidence map. And if you go here on, this is the blog post talking about this. You collect the data, you can visualize the data. Here he's got a, an RGB uh, map, an RGB colorized based on the depth information. There's other stuff you can do like with Python, with Open3D to visualize the whole point cloud. So again, the depth map is really like a point cloud. It's got 9, 192 by 256 with depth information at each XYZ. And also it's got tracks all the other data, like your camera position. And then you can really like reconstruct a 3D mesh based on all of this. And this is really what these apps do. Like Polycam does all this in the app as you go. So it's taking in this raw data, same raw data from the LiDAR and from the camera and doing this processing uh, in the app and then giving you options for how to export it. So I find it cool, just fun to, you know, just be a good nerd and just, hey, okay, there's an app on top of the LiDAR data that the Apple phone is sending. What can I do with the raw data itself and what sort of open source tools are available? And it looks like there are already a lot of those tools available. So there's Kenneth. So, hey, Kenneth, thanks so much for the app, Stray Scanner. I love, uh, I just love, I love the idea of that and yeah here's some other stuff on the open 3d python documentation how to do all this the volume integration creating the mesh and he's got a whole uh, readme here on all of the files and and everything that comes out of there so where do we leave that uh here on 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 the lidar yeah again it was magical walking around with this new kind of camera in my pocket. And <laughs> I'll just talk for a moment about <laughs> gear acquisition syndrome. And uh, I was marveling at how many phones that I have. And it's, I guess I realized today, like, hey, wait a second, like, they're not just phones. Like, I have an old iPhone SE, original SE from 2016, that was my second, like, phone after a flip phone, uh, basically, or maybe I had an Android once, one, t one generation before that I had an Android, but iPhone SE first generation, I still use it. I just got the battery replaced and it's working like, like gangbusters, it's great. But then I have a Samsung phone and then I have like an iPhone 12 Pro that I don't use as a phone, but I use as a production device, really as a, production device. Yeah, 
I mean, it's got three cameras and a LiDAR sensor, and there's so much you can do with this phone. So I stopped thinking about it as like feeling guilty for buying more phones. No, the iPhone 12 Pro purchase was not purchasing a new phone. It's purchasing a new data collection device, like super intuitive, easy, small, lightweight, portable, with good at battery autonomy, you know, data recorder device that has a lot of neat and new data like LiDAR depth maps and point clouds and all of this stuff. So it's been super fun to explore that. And yeah, that's what I got to share today on StrayScan app, getting the as close to the raw data from the iPhone 12 Pro depth camera, LiDAR sensor as possible bringing some of that into Photoshop, into Touch Designer, or your favorite video compositing. We could have done this in Blender also with the compositor, uh, into your favorite image com compositor device, and then all of the threads that we can go down from here of recreating ourselves, our point cloud data, and just uh, having fun with it. So thanks so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day. Talk to you soon. See you next time. Ciao. Bye.